Well, hello, hello, guys. You're listening to Beauty Bites with Dr. K, Secrets of a Plastic Surgeon. And today on the podcast, I am really interested in fitness and biohacking, and I'm interviewing the amazing Ben Greenfield from Ben Greenfield Fitness. Welcome, Ben. Hey, thanks. That, that's a cool name for a show, Beauty Bites. I, uh, I, I, I would anticipate maybe you being able to release like a candy bar with collagen in it or something like that. Called, called, called the beauty bite. Well, how did you know I'm coming out with a collagen powder soon? I'm so excited really? about it. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love in terms of things that can beautify the body from the inside out, I would say co collagen is up there. Uh, another one I like is astaxanthin, you know, for a lot of sun damage or, or lipid oxidation. That, that's another great, great one for, uh, for beauty. And then uh, do you do much with peptides in your practice? I do. I, I have a skincare line with peptides that are in my triple shot serum, my neck cream, and my night cream full of peptides. Yeah. Do you, do you use the, uh, the GHK copper peptide at all? No, mainly pomatil tripeptoid, which is known for wrinkle relaxation and building collagen and tetrapeptides. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been looking into GHK quite a bit. It's, it's a smaller peptide, so it's, uh, it's transdermally absorptible and uh for for uh, facial and for uh for hair application it seems to actually be really beneficial i've actually had some clients use it for uh for things like enhancing hair growth so that's another interesting one interesting for you guys listening i want to give you a visual so as i'm zooming here with ben he's walking on a treadmill <laughs> he's got his podcast microphone right in front of him walking on a treadmill he looks like he's 20 he has the face of a 20 year old um, but actually, he has a master's degree in exercise physiology and biomechanics. He's been hardcore into the fitness world, and he's partnered with doctors, opened a series of personal training studios, gyms, and biomechanical labs all across eastern Washington, Idaho. And he is an amazing personal fitness trainer. He's building an empire um, based on his you know, athletic abilities. And Ben, you've, tr you've competed in over 120 races, 12 Ironmans, and been on Team Timex multi-sport team winning a gold medal for the USA. So you're, you have quite a track record. Well, you know, like in the past, I would say year and a half or two, I've kind of put the brakes on a lot of the more masochistic endurance style events. And now I'm, I'm pretty happy like going on long walks and, and occasionally swinging the kettlebell in the garage uh <laughs> you're getting old uh, are you getting old <laughs> no i mean you know honestly like we were just talking about beauty you know when it when it comes to uh everything from you know excessive oxidation and, and aging and you know skin health and and joint health and a host of other factors related to just you know looking and feeling good as you age uh you know beating yourself up every day with with lots of running and cycling and swimming and excessive training you know it's it's right up there with, uh, you know, consuming too many uh, seed and vegetable oils or, you know, spending way too much time in the sun. I mean, like, you know, yeah. it's a, it, it can kind of, uh, it, it can kind of uh, come back to bite you. And um, I'm not, I'm not convinced it's the, it's the best way to stay healthy for life. I think there are better ways to exercise. Granted, you know, it can be incredibly fulfilling to, you know, cross the finish line of an Ironman or a, or a marathon or go and do some crazy thing that you know scares the hell out of you that's incredibly fulfilling to to actually finish but i i tell people them to not fool themselves into thinking that's the it's the best way to stay healthy and fit for life versus you know walking a lot and occasionally lifting something heavy playing some sports and yeah um so that's a little bit more what i what i do now though yeah for for a couple of decades there i i competed pretty heavily in a lot of stuff yeah, it's probably not sustainable. It's definitely wear and tear on the body, that constant joint and, you know, traction on the joints and the strain and the, the daily wear. It's, it's difficult. Um, right now you live on a 10 acre forested wilderness in Washington. Is that right? With the, your wife and twin boys? Hey, you, you, uh, you're either psychic or you, or you read a bio somewhere, but uh, yes, I read you, a are, bio. you are, you are pretty much correct. Yeah. And you have boys named River and Terrain. I love those names. Is it Terran or Terrain? Uh, it, it's Terran, you know, Terran. kind of like river, river, water, Terran, earth. Yeah, dirty hippie names. I love that. I have twins also. Mine are 21 
and named Cammy and Revy. <laughs> they're older, but how old are yours? I'll have, to, I'll have to ask you for parenting advice. My, my boys are 12. They're, they're 12 year old twin boys. Oh my God. Well, enjoy that time. Cause that's like the best time on earth and don't give them cell phones till they're in like 10th grade for sure. <laughs> Cause they'll never look up again. You'll never see the eyes. It's only the top of the head after that. I hear you. We, we want, we don't have any rules about screen time or, or diet or anything like that in our house. We just kind of set a good example for the kids. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really not on the screen much aside from when I'm, when I'm working and we, you know, we eat really healthy and you know, we exercise and, you know, I, I, uh, I feel like a lot of parents, when they set up screen times for their kids, they just kind of create a forbidden fruit where, you know, all the kid wants to do is, is slip away and find a video game because, you know, there are a lot of those 30 minutes. And so, you know, I told my boys, they, they can have as many phones and as much screen time as they want, but, uh, you know, if they want a phone, they got, got to buy it. <laughs> exactly. Um, so you've co-founded this, um, business called Kion. Tell us a little bit about what you do and what's your personal philosophy of wellness that's kind of infiltrated your company and what you what you advocate for your customers. Oh yeah. Um so so uh yeah Kion was was kind of like a little brainchild of mine about three years ago. I just wanted to you know, I, I love to study ingredients and formulations and you know everything from Ayurvedic and traditional Chinese medicine herbs to you know modern molecules like variants of you know creatine or omega-3 fatty acids or, you know, special things that are, that are more synthesized by modern science. And, um, I've always kind of done that. You know, I, I love to, I love to be outside. I love to bow hunt and spearfish and, and plant forage, but I also really like, you know, like the deep lab biohacking kind of stuff. And so I created this company to just scratch my own itch to be able to create new supplement formulations that kind of combine a lot of stuff together. You, you'd actually like some of our stuff, like, like for, for beauty, we have, um, you know, we were talking about collagen, but uh, we have one of our popular supplements is essential amino acids, which it's like collagen on steroids, uh, even more bioavailable than collagen. And, and uh, you know, for recovery or for performance or for sleep or for neurotransmitters and also for, for hair, skin and nails, that, that's a really, really good one. Um, we have yeah, like a, we, we actually just, we just want some fish oil. It's got, it's actually got a lot of that astaxanthin in it, a lot of omega threes. Um, you know, you're talking about joint health. I, uh, I did a bunch of research last year on these things called tumorosaccharides, uh -huh. which are kind of a component of, of turmeric that are, they're very water soluble, kind of different than curcumin. And then I blended those with a bunch of, uh, what are called proteolytic enzymes, which do a really good job. All right, one second. Your audio just cut out for a quick second. It's probably on our end, but uh, it's probably okay. on our end. But um, oh yeah, yeah, I can cool. hear you now. You know what? Um, she's gonna. My assistant's gonna do one quick. I'm gonna have you repeat that last thing that you were saying, but she wants to do one quick little boomerang for our um, just for Instagram to publicize this for later. Okay. So um, here, do you want to unplug it to hear his voice? Yeah. Internal headphones, MacBook Pro. Okay, say one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, perfect. All right, so you can wave to the audience and maybe say something sound bitey. <laughs> hey. hey, what's up? I'm Ben Greenfield on the Beauty Bites show, talking about biting beauty. It's making me, it's making me hungry. Uh, yes, and testing uh, all that beauty with your with your supplement right. and my talent. That's right, baby. <laughs> Um, okay, perfect. That was perfect. Sorry. And then um, let's go back to that sentence you were saying we, where you got cut off just before I interrupted you. Yeah, I don't know what I was saying, but I, I, I was just finishing up saying that, uh, yeah, Keon's just kind of like a playground, you know, for, for all my crazy ideas when it comes to ways to combine different molecules to enhance health or recovery or performance. And so, uh, so yeah, it's fun. It, it's, it's, it's fun to be able to uh, think up new ideas for supplement formulations and then actually make it happen, you know? Yeah. Kind of like cooking. So do you have laboratories where you're doing all these experiments with peptides, turmeric and everything else? We don't, we don't do, I mean, we, we don't do a lot of like huge laboratory, you know, human clinical trial experiments. That's, that's kind of a different ball of wax. It's a, that's a totally, totally different business. Usually those are run by, 
you know, third party independent labs. But yeah, we work with a variety of different really high quality raw ingredient sources and then manufacturing labs to produce the supplements. And then uh, our headquarters are in Boulder. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, most of the team is based out of Boulder, Colorado, and uh, a lot of stuff ships from there. And so, um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's just basically kind of a small boutique supplements company. Um, but you know, pe- people seem to love the stuff we're making. And uh, I personally eat my own dog food. I, you know, every, everything we make is, is just stuff that I, honestly, I, I come up with a lot of stuff just to scratch my own itch, you know, from, you know, fish oil to immune support to, to gut health, et cetera. And, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a blast. The older I get, the more I want to focus on doing things with patterns and routines that um, really help to improve wellness and sort of just simplify your life so you don't even have to think about things. You just do the right things every day. Do you have a, like, what's your typical daily wellness routine? Like, what time do you wake up? Are you a morning person, late person? You know, I'm right there in the middle. I, I, I typically go to bed around 10 or so, get up around oh, 5 30, 6, you know, even though I, I have to admit, and but after lunch, I'll often throw down a quick kind of afternoon siesta, uh, which I really enjoy. I actually, I, I, I live and die by my afternoon quick 20, 30 minute meditation or, or power nap session. But yeah, I, I wake up, I usually lay in bed for a little while. I do some gratitude journaling, a little bit of breath work. I read my Bible, I say some prayers. And then, uh, then I get up and, um, you know, I, I, for, for, for my kind of beauty protocol, I do uh, tongue scraping. Uh, with, with a with a copper tongue scraper and I do uh, I make little uh, coconut oil pulling molds that I keep in the fridge and so typically I'll wake up do some tongue tra- scraping do uh, typically like a, a derma roller on the face with a clay mask or else like a like a facial scrub uh, mm-hmm. followed by uh, like a skin serum uh, and a moisturizer um, and then I um, I'll typically for for the first half hour or so of the day just kind of do some, some deep tissue work, usually on like a foam roller, some stretching. I'll, I'll do a little bit of rebounding on a trampoline to get the lymph fluid going. And, um, you know, I kind of like that quiet time before the kids and my wife have gotten up just to take care of my body. I always have a huge mason glass jar full of water with, I put a little uh, baking soda in there for alkalinity. Um, and then I'll, I actually am a big fan of, of hydrogen. So I put a few hydrogen tablets in there uh, as an anti-inflammatory. And then, uh, often a little bit of vitamin C as well. So I, I drink down that, that big mason glass jar. And then, um, you know, I'll go and uh, use, the, use the restroom. And then typically I like to start my day with uh, like a nice long sauna session. I have one of those infrared saunas. Mm-hmm. And those are actually great for, you know, for, not only for detoxification, but for skin health and, and joint health. So I'll sit in the sauna for like 20 or 30 minutes. Sometimes I'll do a little yoga in there, some stretching or some breath work. I Typically, almost always take a cold shower or jump in a cold pool afterwards. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, I'm kind of like a late breakfast eater. I do a lot of intermittent fasting. So typically, mm-hmm. I'll go like 12 to 16 hours before I eat. So, you know, if I finish dinner around 8 p.m., I will usually have breakfast sometime around 10 a.m. Um, and uh, usually breakfast is either just a little bit of, a little bit of fish uh, or leftovers from dinner the night before. I, I typically don't eat many carbohydrates till the evening. So it's always just some healthy fats and vegetables, a little bit of fish or meat, uh, or I'll make like a smoothie. I have like this whole anti-aging smoothie I make with all these, you know, superfoods in it, like colostrum and spirulina and bone broth. And I uh, usually I'll sweeten it with like a little monk fruit or stevia, blend it up yeah. super thick. I kind of eat it like ice cream. I, I have a whole, if you go to my website and do a search for anti-aging smoothie, I have all okay. the recipes on there, but it actually tastes really good. So, um, I'll do that a few mornings a week as well. And then, uh, then I just work my ass off, you know, typically till about two or 3 PM, uh, writing articles, recording podcasts. I consult with people from all over the world for their health or for their fitness or for their performance or, you know, anything, gut issues, hormone balance. You know, so a lot of times I'm talking on the phone with clients and then, um, usually I'll, I'll take a break around two or 3 PM, have a little lunch, typically just like a small salad or, um, or, or some more leftovers from dinner and, and, uh, and like I mentioned, I'll throw, to, throw down a little nap. And, um, and when I get up from that, usually I do a lot of my reactive work, you know, re- reply to a lot of emails, follow up on phone calls. You know, I like to get the, the productive the stuff done early in the day. And mm-hmm. then uh, usually finish up around, oh, six or so. And then, uh, you know, we'll either go play some family tennis or I'll do a workout with my kids or 
go on a walk, you know, just do something kind of active uh, towards, the, towards the evening. Uh, and then we, we always have these giant family dinners, right? We play all sorts of different board games and card games, and we all come together and we, we all love to cook. My kids even have like a cooking podcast. My wife, she's like a rancher, farmer girl. So she makes a bunch of food from scratch. You know, I'm usually like the meat guy. I'm cooking up fish or beef or even organ meats like liver or heart or kidney. And so we'll make a, a giant feast and usually we'll eat around like well, 7 30, 8 or so. And then we, uh, we go and play music and we do like meditation before bed, some journaling, and then we put the kids to bed. Sometimes I'll stay up a little later and do some reading. Um, usually I just like lay in bed and read for a little while, uh, chat with my wife, hang out. And then uh, yeah, I'm usually asleep around 10 or so and uh, get up the next day and, and rinse, wash and, and repeat. And you've written recently a little bit about sleep and the importance of um, sleep for your physical and mental balance and recovery time. Um, tell me a little bit about sleep and what you think we're doing wrong with our sleep patterns because pandemic has been very rough on people's sleep and the cortisol levels have been so high just chronically with elections and everything. Yeah, don't, don't look at the news before bed, that's for sure. Um, you know, basic sleep hygiene, I think a lot of people know about, right? You're, you're supposed to keep the room dark and not look at screens a lot. Uh, ideally, uh, your body is cold and, and so is the room that you're sleeping in and uh, you're not working in bed. And typically you're trying to limit ambient sounds and noise like sirens and dogs barking and things like that. But what I find for, for a lot of people, even though they kind of know that stuff, it's like the, the implementation of it can be a little tricky or there's all these little things that don't get attended to. Like, like for example, light. Um, we know that, that your circadian rhythm starts actually in the morning. And so getting exposure to a bunch of sunlight early in the day, or even mm -hmm. buying, you know, if you're in a dark or gray area or have an office and you can't get outside, like getting, uh, you know, blue light boxes or things that, that emanate light, very similar to sunlight. Like if you're watching the video, you know, there's a panel next to me that I'll turn on in the morning when I'm working, it produces a bunch of red light, like red infrared light, such as you would see in a sunrise, right? So if I'm in my office at like 6 a.m. and I'm doing that stretching and stuff, it's like I'm stretching the sunrise, even if I'm not out in the sun. So in the morning, it's really important to get lots of really good light exposure. But then in the evening, you know, I'll put on blue light blocking glasses. I replaced all the light bulbs in the bedroom and in the master bathroom with incandescent red light bulbs, right? So it's a little bit more like torchlight or firelight. I have a really good wraparound sleep mask to block light. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I use blackout curtains. So you know, as soon as nighttime rolls around, you kind of want to just turn your home into a cave, especially your bedroom. And then, um, you know, limit, limit your screen time or else just install things on, on your screen devices that suck all the blue light out of it. So you could Google like iPhone red light trick, and that will allow you to program your iPhone to just produce red light and not blue light at night. Or you can install a software program like Iris on your computer which adjusts the screen temp of the computer wherever you're at in the world to be more eye friendly at night and not shut down your melatonin. Or you could install a, a box, it's called a, a drift box on your TV and that, that pulls all the blue light out of the TV. So if you're watching TV at night, it won't disrupt sleep. So, you know, so it's one thing to know, well, I'm not supposed to like look at a lot of light before bed, but there's another thing to kind of know all those little tricks that you can use as, as, as hacks to implement that. Same thing with cold, right? Like, you know, I sleep on this thing called a chili pad, which circulates 55 degrees cold water under my body when I'm asleep, which is amazing for sleep. Uh, typically after dinner, you know, if it's winter time, I'll go for a quick 10 minute, like cold walk outside. Sometimes even take like a lukewarm or a cold shower to really cool the body temp down because that's really important for sleep. And we, we keep our house at about 63, 64 degrees Fahrenheit for, for a night of sleep, which is really fantastic for sleep. And then you know, the stress component, like none of the books I read in bed at night are business books, right? They're all fiction or something enjoyable, something that takes my mind off of work. If I'm staying in a hotel room, I never like flop on my belly on bed and, you know, open my laptop right there on the bed. Like I, I, I don't like my body or my brain to associate the bed with anything except sex and sleep, right? So you just avoid any activities in bed or in the bedroom that will cause your body to associate, you know, the bedroom with work or something stressful. And then, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of any of these white noise generating devices or, or apps like, you know, Sleepstream or Brain FM or New Calm or anything that 
that kind of drowns out ambient sound and kind of lulls your body off to sleep. So, so yeah, just really focus on light, on cold, on absence of stress and on silence or, or covering up ambient noises with other noises while you're asleep. And I, I think those are a few of the, the more important things. Well, talk a little bit about anti-nutrients because this is a new concept for me. Um, anti-nutrients like oxalates, lectins, polyphenols, and like plant-based, what, what is an anti-nutrient and how can a plant-based thing be that bad for you? Well, I mean, plants don't have hooves and claws and antlers and teeth and everything like animals do. So they have to protect themselves somehow. You know, a lot, a lot of plants have, you know, built-in mechanisms also to allow them to just resist digestion so that when a mammal that eats that plant poops, you know, that plant can propagate elsewhere, which is kind of a, a smart survival aspect for the plant kingdom. But unfortunately, that also means that all of these built-in protective plant compounds that allow it to resist digestion or to kind of protect itself from an animal, you know, going through and eating all that plant results in gut distress in a human. And that means that like quinoa, you know, for example, the superfood grain, it's covered with a, a soap-like irritant called saponins or, or soy has a lot of phytic acid in it, or like wheat has a really high amount of, of gluten in it, or, you know, tomatoes and potatoes have a lot of lectins in them. And, and all of these are just plant defense mechanisms that can actually do a lot of damage to the gut. They can result in, in autoimmune issues. They can disrupt sleep. Uh, they, they can cause irritable bowel and, you know, some people will say, oh, okay, so I'm just not going to eat plants, right? Like there's this whole like carnivore movement and paleo movement for their, you know, they, they just say, well, I guess, I guess that means I'm not going to ever eat grains or seeds or nuts or soy or anything like that. But I, I kind of have a different approach. Um, you know, we know, you know, and, and, and a lot of indigenous cultures, hunter gatherer tribes, um, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of these blue zones that are longevity hotspots, they don't not eat plants, but they instead do things like soaking and sprouting and fermentation and all sorts of things that deactivate those plant defense mechanisms, right? So I don't not eat quinoa, but if I'm going to have quinoa, I'll like rinse it multiple times and sometimes even soak it overnight, discard that water. And then all that soap like irritant on the quinoa is rinsed off of it and it's digestible or for like bread, right? Like usually if I have bread, I have sourdough because sourdough is a fermentation process and that pre-digests a lot of the gluten in the bread. So all of a sudden, you know, someone who doesn't do well with bread from a digestive standpoint, they can digest like a sourdough bread. Or mm -hmm. another example would be soy, or like in the West, a lot of our soy is like soy milk or like, you know, edamame when we're out eating sushi or maybe some tofu. Well, those are all unfermented forms of soy, meaning that the soy has a lot of the, the phytic acid in it and other things that can cause damage to the gut or inhibit your mineral absorption, et cetera. But if you look at other forms of soy like natto or miso or, or tempeh, you know, th these are all forms of soy that have been fermented. And that fermentation process actually gets rid of a lot of those problematic compounds. So you just need to, you know, in, in the same way you wouldn't just like, whatever, like eat a piece of raw pork, right? It's just not smart. You're gonna expose yourself to a lot of the potential issues uh, from an infection standpoint, you might get from the meat. So you cook your meat. Well, the same thing with plants. You don't just like, you know, go out to a field and like pull out a stock of wheat and start chewing on it because it's going to damage your gut. You know, you take it back and you, you mill it and you ferment it and you cook it and you make it into bread. And we just need to be a little bit more smart, I think, about recognizing that plants have built in defense mechanisms and then preparing our food in a manner that deactivates those mechanisms and unlocks a lot of the nutrients. Uh, from the plant and, and makes it more digestible. That uh, makes a lot of sense. Even something so simple as rinsing your rice um, quite a lot to get rid of the pesticides and the lead and stuff that's oh, yeah, they, they just in on your rice. On that. They just yeah, did a study on, on brown rice. You know, brown rice, um, it's very nutrient dense, right? Because you're getting the, the um, you know, the endosperm and, and the bran and, and all the other nutrient components that make brown rice better than white rice, you know, from a nutrient standpoint. But that also means that those components of brown rice tend to contain a lot of arsenic, right, mm -hmm. which is problematic. So what they found in this study was all you have to do is what's called parboil your brown rice and it gets rid of the arsenic. And all, all that involves is just boiling water, putting the rice in the water for about five minutes while it's boiling, and then discarding oh, yeah. that water, rinsing the rice out of it, and then proceeding to cook your rice as usual, right? Simple hack. 
but you know, a lot of people just, I mean, I, I don't want to sound um, judgy, but I think a lot of people are kind of lazy when it comes to cooking their food. They just want to like get it cooked, like dump the macaroni and cheese into the pot, have it ready. But we need to take a more slow, uh, systematic and, and smart approach to almost like a, a slow food prep. And it also allows you to have a more intimate relationship with your food, where it came from, how you cook it, how you prepare it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think, I think that, um, you know, we just need to slow down when it comes to the way that we prepare our food and make sure we do things in, in an educated way. I would totally agree. Um, one other interesting thing I saw you writing about with um, this new technology with methylation based epigenetic clocks this for checking what your actual age is or how your aging process is going. Um, are you, how are you using that with your clients and what do we need to know about that? Yeah, I mean, my last book was going to be uh, just entirely on anti-aging and longevity. And I wound up kind of morphing into like a, a 600 plus page manual on just all things body and brain and spirit. But, you know, when, when I was working on the longevity chapter for that book, you know, I was talking about a lot of ways to test uh, either, you know, when you're going to die or how quickly you're aging or what you're what, 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 what's called your biological age versus your chronological ages. And, you know, we, we know that there are strands of, of the DNA, kind of the end caps of the DNA called telomeres. And if those telomeres are excessively shortening, it can indicate excessive DNA damage or an increased rate of aging, right? So one way that you could test to see how quickly you're aging or what your true biological age versus your chronological age is, is via getting a telomere analysis. And that's, that's what people have been doing for kind of like the past 10 years or so to, to get a decent glimpse of their age, but it's remarkably inaccurate. You know, all you're looking typically is at the telomere length of a small subset of cells. It doesn't reflect everything that's going on in the body. And so recently, researchers have come up with a new way to test how quickly they're aging. And that's based on something called methylation, uh, meaning uh, the, the way that, that a methyl group in the body is, is attached to your DNA. And you can get a really good glimpse into a host of different genetic mechanisms that might influence aging by using these so-called methylation clocks. Uh, they're also called you know, epigenetic aging markers. Uh, there are company like uh, Chronomics. Uh, there's another company called Wild Health. Um, uh, Thorn or Longevity is starting to do some of this now. There's a variety of companies that are now testing these methylation markers it's actually a far more accurate way to see how your genes are responding to your environment and whether or not certain things that you're doing, whether it's alcohol or caffeine or the type of exercise or anything like that might be influencing the aging process. And it's actually more accurate than a telomere analysis. And so, yeah, like when a client comes to me for coaching, I run a whole bunch of tests, you know, I'll do like a gut test, you know, like a stool test to see yeast, parasites, fungus, you know, all the things that could be happening in the gut. And that, that's a stool analysis. I'll do like a urine test for hormones like testosterone and estrogen and progesterone. Um, I'll do like a blood test, not only a, a, a basic blood test for things like, you know, lipids, cholesterol, thyroid, et cetera, but a deeper blood test uh, called a spectrocell analysis or an organic acids test, which looks at a lot of micronutrients and small things that, that a standard blood test won't pick up. Um, usually I'll do a genetic test to look at everything from like, how'd your ancestors eat? What kind of genetic risk factors do you have? You know, how do you metabolize coffee? You know, how do you metabolize fats, et cetera. And then, um, the, uh, the other thing that I like to look at are food allergies. Uh, and so like a really, really good immunoglobulin test for food allergies. And when I take all that, like the stool, the urine, the blood, uh, food allergy analysis, hormone analysis, et cetera, it allows me to get a, a much, much better glimpse of someone's unique patterns. And then what I'll do is actually arrange their diet, their exercise program, their lifestyle, et cetera, accordingly, rather than just saying, whatever, this is the brand new sexiest diet, whatever, like the keto diet or the vegan diet or the carnivore diet, you should just eat this way. You know, and that's never the case. That's the, you know, it's the dark secret in the nutrition industries. If you want to make a lot of money, you write a diet book and you say, this is like, the one diet for all humankind, but mm -hmm. you know, there's so much biochemical individuality that you, in my opinion, just you need to test, identify your unique body type, and then eat and exercise and live accordingly. 
It's so challenging. It takes a lifetime to understand your body. And by the time you understand you, you've already aged a little more and changed and your systems yeah. keep degenerating as we go. But would you ever consider doing any anti-aging for your face or maintenance as you start to look more weathered exteriorly? Um, there's such an intimate connection between self-esteem, confidence, and how we project our faces. What do you think of that? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the business you're in. That's why you, the business that's a, 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 a part of part of why what you do exists. Uh, beauty and symmetry are incredibly important to the way that people judge you to your career to I mean, you know, it's just the reality. A lot of people don't like to think about that. But everything from your height to your symmetry to your skin to your hair, like those actually can affect success in life, mm -hmm. not only from a self esteem yeah. standpoint, but in terms of how are the people treat you? What do the people pay you? I mean, it sounds unfair, but it actually is true that by attending to things like your beauty, your symmetry, your body, et cetera, you can really give yourself a, a step up in life. So, so yeah, I do pay attention to that. I, you know, like I mentioned, I do, uh, I do a derma roller typically a couple times a week, along with a clay mask to, to clean up the, the skin. I do like those peptides, uh, the mm -hmm. GHK copper peptide on my skin and on my hair. Um, you know, even my supplements company, Keon, we developed a, an all organic skin serum. We call it our anti-aging skin serum. And it's like 12 different ingredients that feed the bacteria on the skin and, and help to add tone and glow. And I, I go through that stuff like, like crazy. You know, I do that morning and evening every single day. I do the sauna typically three or four times a week, sometimes more. And that's wonderful for the skin. Um, I'm very careful with, uh, my personal care products in terms of choosing things that are low in synthetics, low in toxins, low in endocrine disruptors. So I use almost all natural personal care products. Um, you know, it sounds funny, but I'm even careful with like how often I, I shower and bathe, right? Mm -hmm. Cause the skin has its own biome and you know, I only shower with soap maybe two or three times a week. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the time, you know, I'm just jumping in a river or lake or maybe, you know, doing a sauna followed by a quick cold shower. But you know, I even pay attention to the bacterial composition of my skin. I'm careful not to just excessively clean myself, right? Because the skin yeah. needs its bacteria. So yeah, I, I certainly pay attention to, to a lot of that stuff. And then like we were talking about earlier, I'll use things like collagen, astaxanthin, certain food components that kind of beautify you from the, from the inside out. Awesome. Maybe someday you'll come to LA and would you ever try an injectable? Like as your face loses facial volume and fat pads deflate and descend or, you know, long-term wrinkle set in. There's, there's lots of benefits from Botox I would, too. I do any, anything you write. You know, it's kind of funny because a lot of times when I travel, I'll wind up in medical clinics and people will just guinea pig stuff on me. Like, you know, I've, I, I had Botox uh, when I was down visiting a doctor in Charleston a, a few months ago. And it wasn't because I, it was more just like, Hey, you want to try this out, put it on Instagram. And, you know, I, uh, so I did it. Um, I have done, uh, I've actually gone under anesthesia and done a full body. If you go to YouTube and you, and you do a search for my name and then full body stem cells, I've done head to toe stem cell injections, you know, exosomes all over my face. I've had the bone marrow extracted from my hips and injected into my scalp and my eyebrows. So I, yeah, I've, I've done all sorts of crazy little experiments and, um, so yeah, I mean, the, the uh, long story short is uh, as, as long as I'm comfortable with, uh, like I mentioned, you know, anything that might be synthetic or toxic or an endocrine disruptor that I put on my face or on my skin, I, uh, I'm open to a lot of these different little things in the, in the anti-aging sector. I find it fascinating. It is fascinating. I think with the science and technology, if it's safe and it's going to like, you know, improve your overall outcomes, then why not? You're going to live to be a hundred with all these things that you do, maybe 150, but, um, and your physique is like killer. Amazing. No body fat at all. But a lot of my athlete clients are the ones that lose facial fat so quickly and they start to look gaunt and uh, drawn and yep. a little weathered and cause they're out there in the elements exercising. So it's yeah, well, well, I should say balance. not, not not, not only are, are a, a good amount of particular omega-3 and omega-9 fatty acids really important for that skin composition, or like a lot of cold water fish, fish oil, um, extra virgin olive oil, things like that. But man, I, I think one of the most damaging things you can do for your skin in terms of, of, of diet is uh, omega-6 fatty acids from industrialized seed oils, like canola oil, sunflower oil, yeah. sapphire oil, even with healthy people, like just excessive intake of seeds and nuts and nut butter, you know, a lot of those things can cause excessive oxidation 
oxidation of, of lipids around your cell membranes. And they've even done studies that show that the amount of damage that UVA and UVB radiation can do to your skin is significantly elevated if you have a diet that's high in vegetable oils. So, you know, I, I think that, that from a dietary standpoint, one of the best things you can do as an anti-aging or a beauty tactic is just eliminate seed and nut oils like canola, sunflower, safflower, you know, heated or rancid or processed oils, excessive cooking of foods, like just be super careful with oils, the type of oils that you consume, and instead prioritize a lot of these healthy Mediterranean fats and a lot of these omega-3 fatty acids and uh, your, your balance, your ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s is going to be a lot better. That's so interesting. Um, well, it's been fascinating speaking with you today. And I know you've got a whole workout and you probably walked five, five miles during this podcast, but um, <laughs> I, I, would, I definitely want to send you some of my skincare to try. It's very rich in botanicals and high dose oh, antioxidants oh, wow. and a um, ton of hyaluronic acid, I believe in vitamins and their power topically too. So I'd love to send you that to try. And next time would, you're in LA, smear it on my face. Yes. When you're in LA, we'll try some biostimulators, which are products like Sculptra or Radius calcium hydroxyapatite that turn on your body and your skin's ability to grow its own new collagen. So that's kind of like, I think the next frontier in skin rejuvenation, which is not just filling old lines oh, wow. or filler, but turning on, re, you know, fresh regenerative collagen. So yeah, well, have your, have your, uh, have your, uh, your assistant or whoever set up this interview, have them email my team. Cause they know the next time I'll be in LA and I'll, I'll swing in and you can make me look like I'm 17. You already look 20, but we'll go backwards some more. Benjamin Button. <laughs> well, it's been so lovely interviewing you. Where can all my listeners find you on your various handles? Well, that, that book I talked about, that's at boundlessbook.com. And then my podcast, my articles, you know, everything else, best place is bengreenfieldfitness.com. And then if you, if you want to hire me for coaching or hop on the phone with me and talk about anything, it's, it's just bengreenfieldcoaching.com. So those would be the best three spots. Well, there you have it, guys. You're, thanks so much for tuning in and learning all about biohacking today with Ben Greenfield Fitness. And um, I think all the things you're doing are things we should all incorporate into our lifestyles and whatever little daily hacks you can do to improve your longevity, your overall health. These are things that are investments and I want all my listeners to invest in themselves. That's it for now, guys. Thanks so much for listening to Beauty Bites. Um, you can find me on my Instagram doing amazing things with people's faces at Beauty by Dr. K, D-R-K-A-Y. And our website is the same, www.beautybydrk.com. That's where you can find my incredible skincare with botanical ingredients, high dose nutrients, antioxidants, and more. I'm sending you some, Ben. Um, awesome. that's, it. that's it for now, guys. Stay beautiful. <laughs>